Franken. So Al Franken has come out and he said he's ashamed, but he's not stepping down. He's ashamed of his behavior. He, he said that he can still be effective. He said, quote, I've let a lot of people down and I'm hoping I can make it up to them and gradually regain their trust. Right, this is what he said on Sunday by phone. He said, I'm looking forward to getting back to work tomorrow. So no, he's not stepping down. It doesn't matter. There's an actual picture of him trying to grab a sleeping woman's breasts. It doesn't matter that many, many women have now come out and said they grabbed their butts. He says, by the way, that his defense of himself is that he's a hugger. That he's a hugger. Did his hands hug asses? I'm confused. Here's Al Franken defending himself. You know, I, I, I can't say that that hasn't happened. I take thousands and thousands of pictures. We sometimes in crowded and chaotic situations. Uh, I can't say I haven't done that. And I, I, I'm, uh, I am very sorry if these women experience that. Okay, <laughs> they didn't experience it. You grabbed their butts. Like, dude, I, you, know, you know what takes a lot of pictures in crowded situations? Right here, me. Okay, I do it all the time. Mathis, my producer, can attest to this. Okay, I do this all the time. I'm in major crowds all the time, taking pictures with lots of people, including many young women. Not once has my hand gravitated toward their posteriors. You know why? Because that's sexual assault. You're not supposed to grab people on their butts, you stupid piece of crap. Okay, and here he is saying, I'm sorry if they experienced that as though it was like a hurricane. It just sort of came along and swept them along. Oh, well, I'm sorry they had to experience that inevitability of life, which is my hand on their butt. My bad. You, you know how far the shoulder is from the butt, by the way? It's a long way from the butt. Okay, when I take, not, not to give like basic, the, the knee bone is connected to the shin bone, but um, when I take a picture with somebody and my hand is up here at their shoulder, I have to travel at least two feet downward to reach an ass. Okay, but apparently Al Franken's hand is so driven by gravity downward. Right? He has the heaviest hand in the world. He just can't keep it up there, just slides it down. And then he says, well, you know, I'll apologize if these women experienced anything. It's just, it's just terrible. I just can't. You know, I, but I'm not stepping down, I'm not leaving or anything. And the Democrats are not going to force him to leave. Okay, and the proof is there. It's all there. It's pretty astonishing. So okay, another one of these Democrats demonstrating her hypocrisy. There's a woman named Jackie Spire. Jackie Spire uh, is a Democratic representative. And Ms. Spire, is, uh, is, she has said that there are multiple sexual predators basically in Congress. And John Conyers is not one of them. She has said that she knew about all of the, that people know who these people are. She's from California. Here is her discussing John Conyers, right? Here's what she had to say about John Conyers uh, the other day. Do we actually have a clip or it's just the graphic? Okay, so here's what she actually said. She said, quote, I think the allegations are very serious, and that's why there's the ethics committee needs to move forward very swiftly. Not wait years, but very swiftly. Staff up, if necessary, to determine whether or not those allegations are accurate. If they're accurate, I do believe Congressman Conyers should step down. Okay, the if they're accurate routine, the if they're accurate routine, basically suggests that now there needs to be a full trial before we decide in public affairs whether or not somebody needs to step down. If that were the case, Bill Clinton was never convicted of anything. Hillary Clinton was never convicted of anything. David Vitter was never convicted of anything. You know, the, all, these, all these people, Anthony Weiner at the time he resigned had not been convicted of anything. That's not how politics works. Politics is not about the idea that you have to go through a full due process trial. That's what you do to avoid prison. Politics is about who do you want representing you. And if we're all going to now have the standard that you have to be convicted of a crime in order for you to be removed from office, then I guess that's our standard from now on. But it just means that our politicians are basically going to be worse and worse people. It's pretty astonishing. right? And Conyers, of course, has said that he'll step aside in the Judiciary Committee. It means nothing. Again, for the, for the 10th time, John Conyers leaving would mean nothing to the Democrats. John Conyers' district is heavily Democratic. The Democrats who have spent the last month saying that it's time to finally wipe out sexual harassment. It's time to finally wipe out sexual abuse. And you know where we should start? We should start with the Alabama Senate race. Let's start with that kitty porn guy, Roy Moore. Let's start with that guy. Let's start with him. You know, we're so into the anti-sexual harassment campaign now, say the Democrats. We're even willing to throw the desiccated corpse of Bill Clinton under the bus. He's no longer useful to us. But we'll just take that skeleton and toss it right under the grinding wheels of that bus. Time for him to go. Teddy Kennedy? Well, that dude's been bloated and dead for a long time. So if we have to say some bad things about Teddy Kennedy, okay. Well, we will set a new standard, a brand new standard. And now the day of light is coming. There will be no more sexual harassment. There will be no more sexual abuse. We'll finally come to a conclusion in this great saga of women being victimized throughout the United States in positions of power. Well, that lasted for like a week. 
Uh, so congratulations, Democrats. Your, your moral stand lasted for, I think, less than a week, actually, because first there were allegations about Senator Al Franken, and then there were allegations about John Conyers. So the, let's start with the Conyers allegations, because this is truly stunning stuff. So John Conyers is an 88-year-old congressperson. He is apparently senile. There, there are a, a reports that he had literally walked into meetings in his pajamas, John Conyers. Uh, he's not been around for quite a while. He was apparently... Uh, a, a, a guy who sexually harassed women many years ago as well. At least those were the allegations. In any case, it has now come out that there was a settlement that Conyers made with a former member of his office in which she accused him basically of propositioning her, and when she refused, he, he fired her. It was basically the allegation. She ended up settling out for like 30 grand. There was also a lawsuit that had been filed against Conyers. There was an on-the-record allegation by the Washington Post. Uh, there was a big report by the Washington Post. All of this happens, and Conyers is 88 years old. Now, make no mistake, this is what's astonishing. Okay, so yeah, I'll, I'll talk about Roy Moore in a little while, but let's just put it this way. The Republicans have said, Roy Moore can't lose that seat. Why can't Roy Moore lose that seat? Because if you go from 52 to 51 votes in the Senate, it's going to be very difficult to pass anything. Plus, what happens if there's a Supreme Court vacancy and you need that vote? So a Senate seat is super important. And right now, if Moore were to lose, he's in the middle of an election cycle, a Democrat would take that seat, and the Democrat would then be able to vote against the priorities of Republicans. Okay, it's an argument. I don't think it's the world's strongest argument, but it is an argument. This is the binary argument we saw during the 2016 election. It's the exact same argument and we're having it again. I didn't buy it then, I don't buy it now, but okay, let's assume that that's an argument. I'll tell you what's not an argument. Let's say that Roy Moore were a sitting U.S. senator, and let's say the governor of his state were a Republican, and now he could be thrown out of office, and the Republican governor would simply appoint a Republican replacement. Or let's say that there was a congressperson, a Republican congressperson, who was in the midst of a sex scandal, and that person would be thrown out of office. There'd be a special election. It's a very Republican district, and a Republican would be elected to replace that person in all likelihood. Wouldn't that sort of take away the, the, even, even the argument that there's a, a binary choice? Well, this is what's so incredible about what the Democrats are doing. Republicans made the argument about more. You can't have Doug Jones in there. Again, I, I think that I don't want Doug Jones in there either. I think the moral choice in Alabama is to sit it out or to write somebody in instead of Roy Moore. But at least there, there's an argument that the Senate seat's important. There is no argument that Al Franken's Senate seat is important because it's not. There's a Democratic governor of Minnesota right now. There's no argument that John Conyers' seat is important. He's in like a D-plus-1,000 district. John Conyers has been reelected for 22 straight terms, I believe. The guy runs like a medieval fiefdom. Okay, if he's thrown out, guess what? A Democrat will replace him. Democrats still refuse to throw Conyers under the bus. This is amazing stuff. It just demonstrates that all this talk about sexual harassment, sexual assault, sexual misconduct, it's all a bunch of hooey when it comes from politicians. They're all lying. They say they pretend to care about this stuff. They do not care about this stuff one iota. And the proof is coming from your very, very feminist House Minority Leader, Nancy Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi came out and she called John, she was asked about John Conyers and whether John Conyers should go. And remember, Nancy Pelosi is the first female speaker of the House. She held up the big gavel. She brought in all of her grandkids, the ones who had not been aborted, and they all stood around her. And it was all just glorious and wonderful. She's such a feminist icon, Nancy Pelosi. Now she's specifically asked about John Conyers, who has many allegations of sexual harassment against him by Chuck Todd. And here is Nancy Pelosi's answer. You said there's now a zero tolerance. Yes. John Conyers. What does that mean for him right now? now? But let's say In or out. we are strengthened by due process. Mm -hmm. Just because someone is accused, you, and, and was it one accusation? Is it two? I think there has to be. John Conyers is an icon in our country. He has done a, gr a great deal to protect women, Violence Against Women Act, which the left wing, right wing is now quoting me as praising him for his work on that, and he did great work on that. But the fact is, uh, as John reviews his case, which he knows, which I don't, I believe he will Why do. Don't you? I believe that well, he will. That excuse me, don't. may I finish my sure, sentence? Sure. That he will do the right thing. He will do the right thing. So here's what he did. He stepped down from the House Judiciary Committee, which the Democrats wanted him to do anyway, because they want somebody who is not senile in charge of that committee. But when she says, we don't know the accusers, how many there are, or what they've said. Well, we know there's a settlement. We know there is a Washington Post story full of allegations. We know that you're calling on Roy Moore to step down from his Alabama Senate race over various, you know, uh, over allegations that are, quote unquote, similarly vague because they're not vague. Right. Nancy Pelosi, great feminist hero, says John Conyers is an icon. He must stay. And then she goes even further. She defends Franken. She defends Bill Clinton. And then she calls Roy Moore a child molester. I don't know how you can hold a standard of evidence that says that Al Franken is innocent. Bill Clinton is innocent. and Roy Moore is guilty. That standard of evidence does not exist. 
Obviously, it is a generational change, but let me just say the concern that we had then was that they were impeaching the president of the United States and uh, for something that had nothing to do uh, with the performance of his duties and trying to uh, uh, take him out for that reason. Why do you think the reaction was different by women on Bill Clinton? And I say that because it does seem as if, frankly, when you watch some of the reactions by the president in defending Roy Moore, or at least overlooking the allegations against Roy Moore, that were you putting politics ahead of your personal disgust? No, but we're talking about a child molester. Uh, oh, okay. okay but we're talking about a child molester. But President it. Clinton was accused of being a sexual predator. Well, uh, I mean, and of even rape at one I mean, point by one, by one why, accuser. Why don't we talk instead about how we go forward? Nobody is proud of President Clinton's behavior at the time. Why don't we talk about how we go forward? Because you haven't gone forward. You're defending John Conyers and Al Franken right now. Forget about 20 years ago. Now. Right? All these Democrats who are now saying, oh, we would have been in favor of Bill Clinton's impeachment. They're full of absolute crap because now they have the opportunity not only to do this, but to do it without any sort of political repercussion. That's what's truly astonishing to me. Right? The political loyalty runs so deep in Washington, D.C. The partisan tribalism runs so deep in Washington, D.C. It doesn't even matter if you're going to lose something. Now, I was under the weird misimpression over the last couple of weeks that all of this was about losing a seat or losing political power. It's not even about that. It's about pure partisan loyalty. It's about John Conyers has a D by his name, and it doesn't matter if he'd be replaced by another person with a D by his name. So long as he has the D by his name, Nancy Pelosi will stand by his side. She'll stand by Bill Clinton's side. She has no good answers to these questions. If they want Roy Moore elected, there's no better way of getting Roy Moore elected to the United States Senate than for Democrats to do exactly what they did this weekend. It gets even worse, and I'll show